I really also agree with Özlem. I feel her presence and uh, having I, having not still being able to accept her, uh, you know, absence actually uh, today uh, is I think uh, full of mixed feelings for all of us. And uh, it, now we are in our final session. But before our final session, um, we agreed to uh, have the closing remarks because this final session is going to be extended uh, if people continue to uh, talk and uh, hence uh, we will uh, begin with the final closing remarks and then move to session three. And um, throughout the sessions, people all around the world were with us in different time zones uh, in some uh, minutes in some uh, for 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 a while we were around uh, 100 people from all around the world uh, and uh, we all gathered to commemorate uh, professor dr neil perchata today who left us all too soon and we, come, we came together to honor her contributions to both feminist economics, literature, and feminist politics, as well as her unique place in our hearts. We thank the University of Utah Department of Economics for hosting this event. Nilfar was one of the foremost pioneers in the field of feminist macroeconomics. She aimed to eliminate the root causes of inequalities she sought to change through feminist macroeconomics, with a commitment to building theory and policy from an egalitarian standpoint and political economy awareness. As one of the early architects of her field, Nifar Chaotai enriched feminist macroeconomics not only through her groundbreaking work, but also by sharing her enthusiasm, ideas, and recommendations to her colleagues. It had the power of moving people. In session one, today, we discussed her journey in this sense and the immense influence she had. Her rich and insightful academic contributions were always coupled with her dedication to knowledge sharing and created creation of a community that could further develop and disseminate feminist theory and politics. She was a co-founder of GMIWG, an international network for knowledge exchange and capacity building among feminist macroeconomists. As mentioned by Diane Elson and Karen Brown in their memoriam for Nilfer Chatai, she was the beating heart of Jemai WG. In the second session, Jemmy Stud, the members of Jemai WG around the globe, as she fondly called them, shared their experiences. They reflected on the network's influence and the connections for, uh, forged during summer schools and conferences, which paved the way for academic and political collaboration. Through their contributions, we were reminded of how brilliantly and passionately she wove a web of individuals committed to promoting gender equitable macroeconomics. <laughs> and now uh, we will be moving to uh, session three shortly. Jennifer was a dear friend and collaborator to many, an extraordinary mentor and a feminist leader, and a mother. So in this final session, we will hear reflections on Jennifer's personal and professional impact from her friends, from her students, co-authors, colleagues, and classmates. They will share with us how their paths crossed, their influence on them, and or a memory with her for us to feel her warmth. Each reflection will be limited with two minutes, and this is a strict uh, rule in the session. And uh, so uh, the plan of the session is as follows. We will first watch the video uh, of recorded contributions, which will last approximately 40 minutes. And then we will continue with in-person comments from invited speakers. And finally, we will then switch to open microphone section for anyone willing to uh, contribute. And uh, we will continue until the last stand standing. And the session may go beyond the time announced in the program. Now we will begin with pre recorded video compilation. So, uh, Yasin, please, can you share the recorded contribution?
Nilüfer was a close friend of mine. I met her when I was only 11 years old. We went to the same high school, worked in our student council together, went to the same college, and took similar courses in social sciences. In different graduate schools, our common interest in feminism developed over time, and we remained friends. Of course, she had many close friends, and I consider myself only one of them. She had a capacity to have many close friends. She was always ready to give what close friendship required. She was very charismatic, but unlike many other charismatic people, she was always ready to commit herself to you, help out whenever you need it, as a close friend would. She had an unbound spirit of generosity, and it was not only material. She would give herself away for what she liked, disliked, or what she believed in. Nilfer also had a unique sense of humor. She was quick with it and great fun to be with. She liked to party. Once we went to a costume party in our college and the organizers at the door refused to take us in because we weren't dressed up. Nilfer immediately retorted that we were Turkish, but in Western dress. And sure enough, we were admitted. She was bold and undaunted in all she did. A physical example is from our safari in Kenya. We both went to the 1985 UN Nairobi conference through different paths, and the organizers took us to a safari there one day. She insisted we have our pictures taken next to two zebras calmly standing by, despite my objection and my claim that they were wild animals. Nevertheless, we had our pictures taken, but with a zebra kicking Nilüfer. I feel very fortunate to have been her friend and I will miss her deeply, always. Hello, my name is Robert Blecker. I knew Nilüfer for almost 50 years. Uh, we started our undergraduate studies together at Yale in 1974. We were both economics majors. We studied together for classes and exams. And then we both went to Stanford for graduate school and again studied with the same professors. And we were close friends and uh, overlapped in everything from political activism to parties and social life uh, to the academic pursuits. Uh, after we both went on with our careers, I was just thrilled to see how Nilofer developed such a, a, a presence and made so many contributions in the area of feminist economics, particularly at the intersection of gender and macro and gender and international trade. And it has been overwhelming to see how many people she influenced and who looked up to her for her contributions in those areas. So I miss Nilofer very much. She died much too young, but I'm so glad that she was able to make those contributions and that so many people are able to come together across the world to remember her, as I always will. Thank you. Hello, my name is Salih Bolak Borata. I'm one of Nilofer's many feminist girlfriends from our PhD years in California. In fact, we used to call each other Hemshire, Sisters in Solidarity. Of course, she inspired me like she did many people. Uh, she inspired me to be curious about many things, um, nationalism, women's movements in the Middle East. Uh, hey, she inspired me to wear more than one lipstick at a time. And she was always very supportive of my work. I'm forever grateful to her for that. Uh, a major highlight of our intellectual journey uh, was finding ourselves in a, a community of scholars at an academic conference in uh, Germany in 1989. That was the first time that women from Turkey, feminist researchers came together as a community and shared our work. And a major book was published from those uh, contributions. And then some 20 years later, 
Uh, she came to Istanbul on sabbatical and spent a couple of years here. Those were very memorable times. I will always cherish having her for dinner, sitting around the table, drinking from these little uh, bottles of champagne that she adored, talking politics, laughing, and um, just her uh, easy way of being affectionate and endearing with people, young and old. Um, I'll never forget how she humored my mom. She would uh, come wearing these rings, one of a kind rings on her fingers and would flash them to my mom and say, see, and would take out one and give her uh, a gift. That meant a lot to me. Uh, these red frames are her gift to me. Uh, I love them on her. And then she searched and found them on the internet and surprised me. In fact, Nilfer will always remain as my friend in red, bold and passionate. The last image I have of her is uh, her coming to visit me last winter just before she went to Utah and looking gorgeous and knowing it too in her red and black Karl Lagerfeld coat. She came in and she said, ta-da. And that was so much her, Nilüfer, our beloved friend. Hello, everyone. I'm Steve Bizzari, professor of economics at Washington University in St. Louis. Nilüfer and I were in the same entering class of economics PhD students at Stanford in the fall of 1978. We were also both born in 1955. Uh, Nilofer and I shared an interest what during our Stanford days was called alternative approaches to economics, which basically encompassed just about anything that wasn't mainstream neoclassical analysis. Our shared interest led us to study together to survive those first year comprehensive exams and we immediately became friends. We both work with Don Harris as our advisor and mentor and, and took the classes in Marx and history of thought and the Cambridge capital controversies. I thinking about Neela first, so I have my well uh, marked up copy of uh, volume one, Das Kapital, that many of these markings and underlines were the result of conversations with Neela Fur and Nafal Amari and Robert Blecker and others that were at Stanford at the time. I remember my friendship with Nilofer fondly. During our time together in graduate school, she was really an anchor for me in what can be very challenging years. I regret that we didn't connect very much after we left Palo Alto. I just remember a few, a couple of random me uh, meetings and conferences and maybe a hug and uh, catching up a little bit, but I always felt we had a connection. I remember Nilofer as a warm, caring, and of course, very smart person. She seemed dedicated to have a good career, but also a good life outside of work, a balance that I think is important and I very much admire. Looked over the participants in this Remembrance Conference, and I'm in awe, but not really surprised by the global reach of Nielifer's research teaching and her advocacy in service to make the world a better place. We lost her all too soon, and even though our contact was very limited in the past years, I will miss Neela Fur along with her colleagues, friends, and family. Thanks for giving me the chance to share a few remembrances with you. My name is Fatma Galasunsab, and I'm here today with you as a very close friend of Nilfer Çağatay. Nilfer and my paths crossed back in 1966. We had both entered American College for Girls with a very impressive campus and an awe-inspiring aura. We spent eight years at the school and grew up together. During our younger years, she was the more articulate of the two of us, designating explicit terms about our relationship, our environment, our challenges. At the time, I was the more dreamy child with a world of my own. In fact, it was Nilüfer who came up to me one day, grabbed my arm and said, Look, we're best friends. What shaped us during our development was not just the academic environment. During the 1970s, Turkey was going through a stormy phase with youth movements, labor actions, which later turned violent. We learned and embraced social responsibility. 
We formed staunch beliefs about equality and fair fairness in all aspects of life. Nilfar was extremely loyal to her beliefs throughout her life, never forgiving wrongdoings, especially when they concerned violation of human rights. Yet this woman, who was fiercely devoted to her principles, was able to listen, to counter arguments without judging, and fairly considering what was being said. Heeding what others were expressing with a non-judgmental attitude was the inherent principle of our personal relationship. During 57 years, we did not once had an abrasive encounter. Nilfar had written in my yearbook write-up, like a bridge over troubled water, I will lay me down. And she did. She's gone now and I miss her dearly and feel very lonely without her. But I can also be thankful that this exceptional woman with a big and generous heart was part of my life. My name is Jane Nodell and I'm recording this from Burlington, Vermont, where I teach economics at the University of Vermont. And I've been quite sad about losing Nilifer, and she and I were graduate students together at Stanford in the late 70s and early 80s, where we were learning rational expectations and all kinds of other somewhat bizarre economic theories. Um, and I was always, you know, quite impressed by Nilifer, um, a, bit, a bit intimidated by Nilifer, um, and she was always very warm and hospitable towards me and I remember some you know very nice time that we spent together in the Boston area um, so I send all my best regards to all of her her friends her colleagues her family members um, and thanks to all who've organized this this great event um, and I look forward to you know hearing more testimonials and um, reflections on her contributions. Thank you. I met Nilifa in my house in New York City when a group of us working on gender and development used to meet once a month to talk about the new research, including our own. She had just arrived at the new school and I was teaching at Rutgers University. I still remember her beautiful and stunning presence when she came in. It was in the mid-1980s. Later on, after she had moved to the University of Utah, we wrote a paper together with the title On Words and Things, The Multiple Paths of Feminist Economics, which we presented at the annual meetings of the AEA in 1997, at a time when postmodernism was invading our universities. The paper was an exposition of the new work in ge on gender and development which illustrated the analysis of things. It expressed our concern about the postmodern argument in favor of words to the neglect of material conditions and constraints. Here, words represent in this course while things stand for material realities. Michelle Barrett, who was known for her book Women's Oppression Today, The Marxist Feminist Encounter, seemed to have changed her mind, and this was a shock to us. She was arguing about the importance of words relative to things. Given that, and I quote her, insofar as ideas are powerful, mecha mechanical materialism is wrong. To the contrary, our paper argued about the importance of things focusing on examples from the gender and development field at the time, and showing that feminist economics was a, was a vital growing approach in which analysis of things were essential. We didn't argue that words were not important, but emphasized the need to show the realities of women's lives and, pol and policies in developing countries. Nilofer felt strongly about the importance of this commitment for feminist economics. The paper was not finally revised and sent for publication, although I think, I think it was and it still is a good paper. 
we never had a final version. I seem to vaguely remember that Nilofer didn't send her comments for the final version. I had forgotten about it until Gunsele sent me a copy. Nilofer was very interested in the connections between postmodernism and feminist economics, but I think that under the time pressure, she gave preference to her primary focus on macroeconomics and trade issues. However, I must say that we had fun working on the paper. I first met Nilofer, I think it was in 1985, at a conference in Trieste. that was a sort of workshop for young economists that was organized every year by some heterodox scholars. And uh, there were people from all over the world, mainly Europe. Nilofer stood out immediately. She was luminous. She was this brilliant, very uh, remarkable person who was always asking interesting questions in the lectures and then was capable of, you know, dramatic enjoyment in the evenings, lots of dancing and, and very uh, ebullient atmosphere. Subsequently, I met her in many different workshops and conferences and seminars all around the world. I remember two particularly, I think they were in Manila and in Bangkok, organized one of them by perhaps UNDP and the other by UNIFEM. And with many of the people who are now quite uh, prominent in IFE and elsewhere. And uh, she was struck me immediately with the very uh, analytical approach that she brought to the issue. She kind of cut through a lot of the debates, insisted on a proper analytical founding, and was extremely deeply passionate about the subject and about extending the possibilities of what we today call feminist economics. So at that time, it was really just very incipient, extending those boundaries, incorporating it very strongly into our macroeconomics. And of course, we know that she and Rania and others, over time, they really did push that through the gender and macro workshops, through a number of other initiatives, through her time in the UNDP. She has been absolutely amazing in terms of pushing that particular agenda. And of course, there's so much that she's contributed in terms of her work, in terms of what she's done for people around her, the uh, ability to encourage and nurture younger scholars, her empathy for others around her, her ability to uh, mix different kinds of approaches and regional perspectives in a way that uh, indicated quite remarkable sensitivity, I think. She had a quicksilver mind and she was, as I mentioned before, she was extremely passionate, extremely intense about so many of the things. I remember a, uh, a conference I had organized in South India by the sea and she had come with Ali Chem and it was partly, of course, she had to spend time with Ali Chem in the swimming pools, but she was rushing back to the discussion so as to be able to fully participate and really be able to put across points that she felt were being inadequately covered by a lot of the other male participants, for example. We are going to miss her greatly, not only because of all of the stuff that she has done and can, would have done uh, in the future for all of us and for broadly the uh, progress of feminist economics in particular, but also because of just her quicksilver personality and mind, her ability to sparkle any kind of occasion and create a sense of fun, her extreme passion, and uh, the way in which her intensity brought out all that it is to be human in all its frailty, in all its joy, in all of its strength. We really miss you, Nilifa. We really think you're still among us. Bueno, yo soy Alicia Girón, soy académica del Instituto de Investigaciones Económicas. Actualmente dirijo el Programa Universitario de Estudios sobre Asia y África y recientemente la UNAM me nombró investigadora emérita. Well, I'm very pleased to be here with Nilofer Karatai, who, which she has been an excellent uh, friend. And I'm going to uh, talk in Spanish, especially because I am from Mexico and also from Latin America. And Nilofer has made a great effort to union many feminist academics for Latin America. Nilofer, eh, algo que nos dejaste a todas las latinoamericanas y a las que somos del sur global fue una gran experiencia 
desde que nos conocimos en Jaffe, en Estados Unidos, en las múltiples reuniones de las Feminist Economies, pero además quiero mencionar un gran trabajo que hiciste en la década de los noventas, que fue un eh, trabajo pionero precisamente sobre el papel de las mujeres en el desarrollo económico. Después tuve la, eh, una invitación que me hiciste para ir y pertenecer a las pues a la red Macroeconomic and Gender. No solamente estuve en Utah, donde nos pasamos un rato muy agradable con varias economistas latinoamericanas, Silvia Berger, eh, Valeria Esquivel, nuestra amiga de Chile, que recientemente también te, eh, te está acompañando. En, y además, eh, pues un gran grupo de latinoamericanas estuvimos en el grupo de Macroeconomic and Gender y posteriormente tuve la, eh, eh, pues nos invitaste a Costa Rica también a, a participar allí en este grupo y en Buenos Aires que fue eh, también donde Macroeconomic and Gender tuvo una presencia muy importante en, 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 en la conferencia de IAFE en Buenos Aires. Bueno, pues siempre te recordaré con mucho cariño tus trabajos son una gran enseñanza para seguir con la línea de economía feminista y por supuesto pues te vamos a extrañar mucho y pues un gran abrazo. Hasta luego. Es so sad to record this video because it's the proof that we lost Luther. I met her for a short period of time but she impressed me from the beginning. Her passion, her intellectual capacity, her commitment. I learned so much from Nilufer at that time. And we were introduced by Rania and we kept in touch for a while. It's so sad, she was so young. And uh, I regret that we have lost contact in the last period because I always learned so much from her and from her warmth uh, towards me. Nilufer, we remember you. You made a mark on all of us. And this is to honor your memory and your contribution. Nilufer was a firecracker. I met Nilufer in 2003 in Salt Lake City, and she was this incredibly intelligent, extravagant uh, woman who guided us through feminist economics. What you probably don't know is that Nilufer was a very good friend of Leonora Carrington, the famous surrealistic painter. Nilufer and Leonora would have drinks every single afternoon while Nilufer lived in New York. In 2010, Nilufer was in Mexico City and we were having breakfast with Marta Lamas. And Nilufer started talking that she knew Leonora. Marta Lamas picked up her phone, called Leonora Carrington and said, Leonora, here is Nilufer and Nilufer visited Leonora Carrington that day. I think that was the last time that the two surrealistic, extravagant, and absolutely divine women saw each other. My name is April Congar. I'm a professor of economics at Dickinson College, and I'm a feminist economist. I wasn't always a feminist economist. In fact, I didn't even know such a thing existed. I came to the department, the uh, PhD program in economics at the U of U in 1996. And I came to the program uh, because it was one of the very few places to learn about heterodox economics. Uh, because it was a pluralist program, but I just didn't know feminist economics was one of them. Uh, when it was time for us to pick a field of specialization, there weren't enough people who wanted to specialize in gender and development or gender economics. 
so a student who wanted to do so was going around and copying for it. She was trying to get other students to sign up so that the uh, course was offered, Yumiko Yamamoto. Uh, she sat down, I asked her questions uh, about the relevance of gender, feminist economics to development um, and macroeconomics. And she explained it enough um, that I was convinced I signed up for the course. And um, then uh, taking that course, um, you get the lens, the gender lens through which you see everything and you cannot help but do it for the rest of your life. Uh, during the break, uh, we would go outside. Nilifar probably wanted a break from all of us, but we would surround her and keep asking questions um, that, of course, sound silly uh, right now. But I remember asking her, well, um, isn't there a physical strength difference between men and women? Doesn't that justify some occupational segregation by gender? And uh, she said, uh, potato sacks do not have to weigh 50 pounds. Uh, she was talking about the gender bias in technology, and she just gave these answers that only experts who um, thought about it for a very long time, uh, they were precise, they were clear. Um, and just like any other covert, uh, I've been a feminist economist since uh, she welcomed me uh, to the U and to Salt Lake City, which was a big change at the time. As anyone who knows Nilifar knows well, in addition to being one of the most intelligent people you ever meet, uh, she was also very warm and generous. These days or any time there's an issue, I wonder uh, what she would think about it. I miss her very much. And I'm very grateful because I wouldn't be where I am or even the person that I am if it hadn't been for Nilfar. Thank you, Nilfar. Hi, my name is Cheyenne Osterreich, and I am full professor in economics at Ithaca College. And um, my feminist economics roots really start with Nilfar at the University of Utah. The core courses for the program were amazing. Um, and by the time I met her, I was ready, but I had no idea. She brought the feminist Marxist trade economics world to me, and she weaved these strands together in a way that impacted my orientation and subsequently all of my teaching and scholarship. To understand global capitalism, she said, we have to consider power and history across and within households and communities and states. She wrote that on the board. I remember it so clearly. And I write it on the board now in almost every class that I have. I also remember the, um, the, the day that she said in class, somebody ought to write a dissertation about gender analysis of Parker Singer thesis. And I said, I'm going to do that. That sounds amazing. So a couple of years later, I had written a dissertation after many bottles of wine and lots of inspiration and help and and fixes up fixer, fixer uppers with my writing, <laughs> um, and out came this um, dissertation that had this empirical questions on the Prober Singer side, but these theoretical questions, feminist Marxist trade theory about the role that gendered labor markets played in the distribution of surplus value of, from rich countries to poor countries. The work was in a chapter in the book, Feminist Economics of Trade. Nilifer and Karen Grohn and Diane Elson and Irina von Savern edited it. And Nilifer knew that I needed that contribution to help secure my tenure case. I was incredibly grateful to her and also to everybody. I was very honored to be in that really important publication. And over the years, Nilifer and I talked about the state of the field, our families, our children, the literature. I would do anything she asked of me. In December of 2022, I called to say hello and how are you doing? 
and I didn't get through and I knew she was either in Utah or in Istanbul and I wasn't sure so I thought I would try again soon and then I learned that just a few days later she passed and I hope that she knew how much she was loved and how much she did for so many people what she did for the policies way for changing the way that people think about policies and for bringing people together on such an inspiring topic and also teaching us how to dance when things are low. I will miss her and thank you to everybody. I love you. Hi everyone. I'm Özge Özay, an Associate Professor of Economics at Fitchburg State University. Um, thank you very much for organizing this conference in honor of uh, Nilüfer. My connection with her goes back to 2001, my first year as a grad student at University of Utah. And I didn't really know that a field like feminist economics existed back then. Um, but during my first year, I remember Nudifier holding these lively and fun gatherings where we got together to share, to you know, prepare and share a meal. And uh, I remember how non-hierarchical the whole process felt like. Um, in every conversation that I've had with her, I found myself learning something new from her. Um, and it really didn't have to do with um, uh, economics uh, either. It, um, you know, we had conversations about art and history um, and so on. I also thought she defied this um, conventional image of a feminist that I had in my mind back then. Uh, her famous red lipstick felt so empowering and liberating to me. Uh, when I eventually took my first uh, course from her, it was transformative for me on personal, academic, um, you know, intellectual levels. I eventually chose a dissertation topic in the field, and I can never thank her enough for introducing me to the um, feminist economics and for being a continual uh, source of inspiration. There's a poem in uh, Turkish that roughly translates into uh, every death is uh, untimely, and in her case, uh, it feels even more uh, fitting. Um, I really hope that she rests in peace and uh, thank you again. Hello everyone, my name is Hussein Azel and I have received my PhD degree from the department. In 1997, uh, we met Nilefer. In 1992, when we first arrived to Utah, and myself and my family, and she was always open to us and showed great hospitality and also compassion towards our family, especially to our child. Uh, when I think of her, I remember her passion, her passion about the academic issues, of course, and also about people around her. And she was like a beacon, I could say, uh, who illuminates people around her and changing their lives even. Uh, I have witnessed it in different times and she was very excited about the issue she was talking about and she always tried to explain uh, what she's talking about to people around her in the clearest way and I think I have learned a lot from her, especially about the issues of gender and the importance of feminism from an economic point of view. And she was talking very fast, as you could remember. And I remember one time uh, at a conference at the department, uh, she was again talking too fast and she asked uh, how much time she got and the chairperson I don't remember who he was actually, and the chairperson said something like this, if you talk slowly, I could give you some extra time. So I found this uh, quite amusing at that time because, you know, some American guy, even some American guy uh, could have a hard time to follow her. So 
I miss her actually every time and may she rest in peace. Hi, my name is Yavuz Yashar. I'm a professor of economics at the University of Denver. My path crossed with Nilofers when I was a first uh, year MA student at the University of Utah while I was taking her international trade class uh, in the autumn of uh, 1996. I vividly remember that she was uh, asking every one of us in the class what our names were, uh, what, we were what we were interested in, etc before starting her lecture in the first meeting. Beginning from that moment uh, till our last conversation over the phone in late 2021, I always noticed that Nilifer was always a people's person, more than a teacher, a colleague or a friend, who was genuinely interested in her students colleagues and friends and their well-being, how they are doing first, then business. Um, I recall so many gatherings in her place where we get uh, to know each other, build new friendships, and had lively academic or non-academic conversations around her dinner table. Although I missed uh, the opportunity to work with her in my dissertation because she was away for a UN position in New York City. She has been extremely influential in my scholarly research, which is at the intersection of macroeconomics, development, and social policy with gender. Nilifer's contribution to critical feminist political economy and associated social policies, I mean, not only distributive, but also transformative social policy proposals, paved the scholarly way for many of us, particularly my own. Whenever I share the name of my alma mater, I have been reminded by many people that how lucky I am since as one of the people who contributed a lot to the feminist economics, Nilufer worked there. Even if it was not as often as I would like to have, I kept in touch with Nilufer, and she was always uh, responding very friendly and generously. In our last conversation over the phone in 2021, when I told her that I'm interested in my ongoing research about the place of social policy in the intersection between economic and social reproduction, she immediately started suggesting ideas, readings, potential directions to take. So she was as excited as I was, and she was as generous as ever. It's for sure that Nilifer left too early. Her loved ones, friends, colleagues, and students alike, we miss her dearly. Uh, we thank everyone uh, who sent in their pre-recorded videos. Um, uh, so uh, now we'll continue with uh, in-person contributions, first from the invited speakers, then uh, we will also continue with the open microphone afterwards, but some logistics before that. Um, so for each speaker, please start uh, with introducing yourself and telling us your relation to Nilüfer. Start with that and please, uh, you know, limit your uh, speech with two minutes. Uh, so that others can have the opportunity. And please uh, never forget to remain muted unless you are invited to share your contribution. And uh, so first I'd like to give the floor to Mario Floro, Sergi, uh, for her in-person contribution. And after that, we'll continue with Aziz Zakarias. Thank you. 
Thank you very much for inviting me. It's really an honor to be part of this uh, celebration of the life and in, uh, incredible contribution of Nilifer to, to, uh, to the you know, body of knowledge that we now call feminist economics. I am Maria Floro Sergi to friends, including Nilifer. And I've been truly, truly lucky in meeting her the moment I arrived at Stanford University campus in the fall of 1980, that's 43 years ago. She was then the TA for the Math Econ class uh, for incoming PhD students. But Nilifer was even more remarkable after the tutorials and thus our friendship began. As many of you have noted, she is just an incredible human being, so generous of heart and so alive, she was full of life. But you see, we came from countries that were undergoing military dictatorships and we would discuss the political situation and the women's situation in the, both our countries, the Philippines and Turkey. The horrific events uh, in those countries, particularly the executions and disappearance of union leaders, student leaders and so forth, affected us deeply, even though we were thousands of miles away. We saw that learning should not be limited to the classroom and we became active in activities and we were part of the Stanford Central American Action Network and the Stanford Progressive Alliance and learn about our people's other people's struggles. Later on, we became roommates at the graduate student housing and Nilofer introduced me to feminist theory, lending me books such as those of Kate Millett, which deepened my understanding of the gender issues that were raised by the women's movement in the Philippines in between my studying for the comps and her dissertation writing. As many of you also know, she loved life. We listened to reggae, Pete Seeger, John Baez, Bob Marley, and we also cooked Filipino and Turkish food. As you well know, Nilifer was a person who is not shy in speaking out her mind and her beliefs. Our night long converse uh, discussions were invaluable for, for it kept me thinking outside the conventional or mainstream economics. When she moved to New York City to take on the assistant professorship at New School, we continued to be in touch. Her amazing generosity of spirit and sisterhood truly came out when I became a single mother while working towards my tenure at American University. The sustained incredible support that she gave me throughout my first six years at American University is one that is forever etched in my memory. She was there for me when I fought for my tenure and joined in celebrating my victory afterwards. I don't wanna take on more of the time. I just want to mention that I've been privileged in participating in the network that Nilifer developed along with many of the people who are part of this celebration. I wanted to also acknowledge the fact that she helped me um, see the, the importance of my work as a development economist working at micro level level data such as time use survey that these findings of my research are useful and can help develop the feminist macroeconomics that we know today i, I just want to end this uh, my tribute to her um, that nilifer was a trailblazing remarkable feminist economist and sister whose accomplishments cannot be measured merely by her publications and service in institutions like the UN, but also in how she challenged, provoked and inspired many of us. That has been her abiding effect on me and her spirit will always remain with me. Thank you. Thank you, Sergi. Uh, Ajit? Ajit, can you hear us? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, thank you very much for organizing this event. I'm grateful to the organizers and uh, for bringing all of us together and although virtually and uh, being given this opportunity to offer my brief uh, recollection of uh, Nilifer and my relationship with her. Uh, my name is Ajit Sakriyas. I work at the Levy Economics Institute. I came to know Nilifer via her work first um, in the late 1990s. And I met her in person, I think it was in one of the earliest gym, gym meetings in 2003 or 2004. 
um, we called each other comrade, reflecting the political roots of our engagement with economics. However, the analytical frameworks of socialist feminism that Nilufar and I most strongly identified with had become was quite unknown to most of the younger German stars and was unpopular among several older German stars at that time. Uh, the dominant paradigm had become one of a liberal feminism, which reduced one's class location and one's location in the imperialist system, global system, as one of the, as two of the identities that an individual may have. And that paradigm could at best be considered um, as giving room or advocating for social democratic policies with a note to women. Uh, things have changed for worse, uh, unfortunately. The dominant paradigm now is neoliberal feminism. Uh, Nilifer and I lamented about it in uh, one of our last conversations, which I think was just before the pandemic in 2019. And we plan to uh, write a paper critiquing the analytical underpinnings of uh, the post-2000 mainstream macro models incorporating gender. Unfortunately, uh, as uh, uh, Gunseli remarked at the beginning of our gathering today, it, it would remain one of the unwritten papers by uh, Nilifa. But uh, I do believe that we can contribute to her legacy by pursuing these lines of uh, work and politics. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ajit. And uh, I, I just want to take a minute uh, to let everybody uh, know about the accumulated information and uh, maybe the intentions we are actually building up in this conference. We're hearing that she had uh, unpublished work uh, and she had a lot of projects. Hopefully that can turn into a book project in, in, the, in the future. This is something that we are hearing over and over again. Secondly, we are feeling the need of having a stock taking meeting, uh, maybe in the um, you know uh, following uh, in our following agenda we can do that and i also want to announce uh, you that uh, thanks to uh, uh, actually unrest and uh, 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 we are getting support from unrest and uh, we are able to uh, actually uh, Thanks to Francisco Cosmontiel, we are able to uh, have uh, Nilfer's archive uh, in uh, the Women's Library and Information Center in Istanbul, so that new feminists or you know uh, already feminists who want to know more about Nilfer can uh, encounter her, get to know more about her work, her personality, what who she was. So. Those are uh, the projects that we can actually pursue, uh, uh, you know, in the in the time to come. Now we'll continue with Bilge Ertan, and after Bilge, we will ask Dimitri Papa Dimitriou uh, for uh, his contribution. Bilge. Thank you so much, Özge, and thanks everyone for organizing this really important event. Um, my name is Bilge Erten. I'm an Associate Professor of Economics and International Affairs at Northeastern University in Boston. Um, so after completing my dissertation at UMass Amherst, I encountered Nilfar during her visit to United Nations uh, DESA in 2011. Um, and later I attended the JAM IWG conference in, that was held in Istanbul, uh, that was organized by IPEC and her group. And uh, we were uh, kind of in touch since her, like seeing her at UN and basically um, we started a project together uh, that later turned into a published article in feminist economics and in the meantime, I also participated in other JAM IWG events. Um, the one that Anna and Eva I think, talked about earlier 
uh, in Krakow. That was also extremely influential for me. So both of those events were kind of um, really put together a lot of my interests and tie, tied it together in a way that was really formative uh, for me as an intellectual. Um, and as everyone has emphasized, you know, she was so passionate and so influential, like on her peer group, but also for the younger, you know, economists that are looking for a role model. Um, and she really pushed the frontiers in terms of macroeconomic analysis, but also how we can incorporate gender into macroeconomic analysis. Um, in our paper, we focused on how innovative forms of finance can be used more uh, to raise more funding for gender equality projects uh, at the international level. Um, and this paper, I think, also had a very big importance for me personally in terms of having my first tenure track job. Uh, and partly because NIRFA was so influential, not only among economists, but also sociologists. And the position I was recruited in was particularly focused on gender and development. So I owe her pretty much all of my, you know, intellectual heritage, uh, intellectual sort of inspiration and sort of where I want to go. Um, and that really paved the way for me in terms of clearing many roadblocks that were, um, along this intellectual journey. And as also editor now of feminist economics, you know, we all aim to follow in Nilufar's shoes and carry the importance of feminist economics uh, for many generations to come. Uh, I, I just, you know, as many people said, I couldn't believe uh, what I heard. Um, and I will miss her uh, really dear. Yeah. And um, sorry, I will remember uh, always as an extremely passionate and inspiring economist. So <laughs> lost my whole star, but um, thank you so much. Thank you, Bilge. Um, thank you. So, Dimitri, the floor is yours. Thank you very, very much, uh, Ozge. Um, Having heard all the testimonials about Nilofer, I'm actually at a loss of uh, words to express uh, the value of someone's life, especially for someone uh, like Nilofer, with capable hands and committed heart. Her achievements are known to all of us, and her legacy of progressive ideas in economics and particularly in feminist economics, would never be forgotten. I first met Nilofer in 1986 when she participated in a joint conference with the, of the Levy Economics Institute and the New School on the economics of Nicholas Kaldor. Her talk um, in that conference was on international trade and labor rights. She was um, that vivacious, elegant and beautiful woman, self-confident and full of energy. I was very impressed with her, but she wasn't impressed with me at all. I didn't meet her again until about 10 years later when she was in, at the UN and had moved to New York City in a dinner that Ryan Antonopoulos arranged. Nilnefer, of course, did not remember me. We became very close friends afterwards and spent time together in New York, in Istanbul, in Athens, and in Salt Lake City, and many times celebrating holidays. And I remember specifically one occasion where she wanted her picture taken with a small holding a small Christmas tree. This was Nilofer. In our many and frequent conversations, I realized the integrity, the frankness about, and courage for a cause. She was a tireless and forceful advocate of labor rights and women's empowerment. 
And she was the instigator in convincing Rania and me to establish a research program at the Levy Economics Institute on the economics of gender, which has made some notable contributions in the, in the, in the approaches and also in some of the measures that are crucially important um, in the area of women's empowerment. Nilefer left us too soon. Our lives would be empty in some places that her energy once filled. Our sorrow le lesson is lessened to only slightly with the comforting thought that we had the privilege to know and work with her over the years. She exuded enthusiasm, trusted others, and inspired us. Let me end by saying Ilifer was a wonderful woman we will not forget. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dimitri. Now, uh... We'll continue with Ursula, uh, Ursula Fan. The floor is yours. Thank you. My name is Ursula Funk. I'm from Switzerland. I met Nilefer. Um, that, that is, I'm not quite sure, but we both started at graduate school at Stanford University in 1978. But I was in social anthropology and she in economics. So exactly when our paths crossed, I cannot remember, but at, after some time, I started to take courses in economics and uh, I met many people at Stanford, but with Nilifer and also Sergi, who just spoke before, a few uh, minutes before, Sergi Maria Floro, we became close friends. It really was, very natural. Um, when I reflect about it, why was that? I think it had something to do that we all had an international background. We all had a progressive attitude and we all had then already a clear feminist interest, feminist perspectives and an interest in including gender in the academic work. So, we had, uh, we also were involved, as Sergi already mentioned, in some political organizations there at Stanford. And it, we just, I learned a lot from you, for, but it was just such a, a feeling of um, international solidarity, friendship among us international women at Stanford. Um, I then went on, I focused in my studies on Africa and I, went on into development cooperation work, first to research in Africa and uh, then into development cooperation. So not an academic career, but over the years, uh, I always was, I had the chance, when I had the chance to see Lerifer, be it in New York when she was at the new school, when I came back to Stanford uh, to work on my dissertation, just over the years, we always kept in contact. She came by in Switzerland on the, her way to Istanbul and uh, all the descriptions that everyone has given of her, of her warmth and uh, exuberance uh, was what kept us, um, I mean, was what also charmed me obviously. And I, uh, and I, I just loved her. Uh, in my development work, I, uh, over the years, uh, also uh, included, always ensured that I included uh, gender uh, issues in trying to advance gender equality in development. And so on and off, I heard about uh, publications from Nilifer or Sergi, which I also tried to introduce in, in my work. So. Um, so I, I, we had parallel paths, but amazingly similar. And when 2010, I came back to 
Swiss who is working actually now that time for the Swiss government for in development. Um, I was then at starting 2010 in charge of the UN women, the Swiss support to UN women. And that's one way we got back in touch because we were looking for someone that would do uh, a study that we would finance through UN women. And one of the persons I got in contact about was Nilifer. So to say, uh, even though we went different paths and we these paths only crossed once in a while, our friendship stayed deep over the whole life. And uh, about a year before she passed away, we spoke on the phone and she was telling me she was going back to Istanbul. I'm in Switzerland, retired. And we were just talking about how we would then meet again in Istanbul and until the bad news arrived. And I miss her very much. I thank you very much for organizing this and I will keep her forever in my heart. Thank you. Ursula, thank you very much. Uh, many, many plans uh, that uh, we couldn't realize with her. I think we all have. And uh, we can now uh, move to uh, an old jamista, Marcia Fontana. The floor is yours. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for, for today. It's been really good to share with all of you so many uh, wonderful uh, testimonies and uh, memories. Um, I'm uh, Marcia Fontana, I'm one of the gemistas, and um, I would like to briefly remember two things about Nilufa. The first is about uh, how I met her, my first impressions. I met uh, Nilufa for the first time in 1999 uh, when she was working at UNDP in New York. I'd been invited to present my PhD at a meeting to discuss the second special issue of world development on engendering macroeconomics and trade. Um, what were my first impression? Um, that she was a, a very warm, a welcoming woman, and, and above all, someone with a very witty uh, sense of humor. Um, her love of reggae music and protest songs, as other friends uh, mentioned earlier today, uh, became uh, uh, soon uh, very apparent. And I was really impressed by the fact that she remember, she knew perfectly well the words of a, a, an Italian communist song um, that we um, uh, later sang together uh, in a few occasions. The other thing I like to um, say is something about, uh, so what Nilufa used to say, something he used to say very often at the summer schools in Utah. As you uh, probably remember, Nilufa used to give us an introductory welcoming speech every year at the beginning of the summer school. And um, she would encourage us to be very bold and fierce with uh, conventional mainstream uh, macroeconomics and dominant ideas. But she'd also say, uh, remember, you're criticizing idea, not people. So be fierce with ideas but be respectful of, um, of people. Even when people carry out ideas and views, you, you do not agree with. And I think, I feel that Nilufa was very good at practicing this principle. And in some ways, I think I've been at the receiving end of this. When I joined the group, I was developing a model that is under, was underpinned by fundamentally very standard Exerolin type of trade theory. And you all know how much Nilufa hated um, Exerolin. But she always encouraged me to consider alternative approaches without ever judgment or without being overly critical. And I have to say that um, in many, many occasions, particularly in public events and conferences, uh, what I felt from her was a lot of solidarity and, and support in a real meaningful way. So um, I just like to, to end by saying that um, I will do my very best to continue practicing all what I've learned from uh, Nilufa, both in my work and in my life. And thank you so very much.
thank you, Marcia. Um, she certainly gave us not only theory but also an attitude towards life, and uh, you know she also greatly valued integrity in personality, and you know uh, her values are also going to live with us. So now uh, we can uh, hear Naomi Chatwin. Naomi, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I, my name is Naomi Chakwin. I first met Nilfar in the new school. She was my economics trade professor. And my pre previous experience with women economics teachers was zero. My previous experience with cool, hot economics teachers was also zero. Um, she wore great colors. She wore bold lipstick. She had it going on with a full-on attitude when she walked in the room. I had never seen anyone like her. So for a young economist coming up, oh, it was amazing that there were other possibilities out there. Now, three instances I remember is... Uh, <clears throat> the first one is, I don't know, we were going with the group out to dinner, walking on the streets of New York, and we're well on our way saying, oh, let's go eat. And all of a sudden, Neil Lafarge stops us and says, does anyone have any money? And we all looked around and said, oh, that's a good question. And we figured out we had enough. And she said, okay, seems like enough. And we pushed on. So spontaneous, open, and generous. The second one was, as many people said, Nilifa was a beacon, but I have to say, oftentimes that beacon was at the end of a cigarette. She had her own interpretation of the no smoking policy in the new school. I mean, can you remember, people used to be able to smoke in classrooms. Well, her interpretation was that, okay, since we have this new policy, we could only have one person smoking at a time. So I come out of that room like, you know, uh, <clears throat> filled with smoke. And, but that was, you know, Neela Farr. She was going to smoke. And the last one was, uh, she actually introduced me to Lenora Carrington. And she didn't have to do that. It was just, you know, at her apartment. We were just, you know, hanging out. And Lenora walked up, I don't know how many of you have been there, but it's like 47 flights of stairs. This woman was really, really old. And she made it all the way up the stairs. And I have such a different perspective looking at her art in galleries now from um, her talking about what she went through in the art world. And Neil was just so relaxed, so open. She said, oh, let's get some food. She opened a can of... Um, stuffed grape leaves and some olives and you know we just really had a very pleasant warm evening in that Greenwich Village apartment and I'm going to always remember her her kind of spark and her differentness she was really really different than all the other economics teachers I had met at that time so I just wish I'd spent more time with her okay thank you thank you Naomi and uh, Bernadette uh, Vangela, is Bernadette with us? Bernadette, can you hear me? I suppose she couldn't uh, make it, uh, so, she, so we can move on. Now, um, we'll continue with open microphone uh, part. Uh, and you will have to raise your hand uh, from reactions in the bottom uh, if you would like to contribute. Um, but before that, I first want to uh, give the floor to Ali Cem, uh, as you, you know, decide whether you would like to contribute. Uh, let's hear from Ali Cem, son of Nilüfer, who we all know. Uh, he has been, you know, he grew up amongst us, amongst, uh, you know, hundreds of feminists from all around the world. And um, as, she, as he used to do back uh, when he was a kid, he, you know, very uh, patiently have been uh, listening everybody. And I believe he really enjoyed 
the conference and he really wanted to, to thank everybody. So I'd like to let Alijan speak before we start the open microphone uh, section of this session. Um, thank you. Um, you can hear me all right. Uh, yeah, it's been phenomenal hearing so many different people with so many different perspectives uh, talk here. And um, uh, I mean, I my personal opinion is that my mom was just funny, you know, a funny person. Oh, there was a lot of funny things, and uh, I'm just really enjoying uh, uh, learning and hearing more. Uh, I did it. I didn't know most of this at all. Um, she actually would talk a lot uh, about uh, just in just talk a lot in general. So heard a lot about a lot of you, um, but uh, and it's good to see uh, people that I recognize. Um, but yeah, I want to. Thank uh, the organize the youth department uh, for organizing and the uh, organizers. Uh, and it's just good to have this here, uh, have this memory. Um, yeah, and it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's good to have this. Yeah, I want to thank. Thank you, Ali Jam. It is wonderful to have you with us. It's been great that you participated. And uh, now uh, we can start the open microphone uh, part. Um, uh, so um, I know Ayşe Kayalı uh, wants to go first. And uh, then we'll have Vilma uh, Yüzbaşı Yangürkan if she's here. Yes, she is also raising her hand. And then Hale Boratal. And then Yasemin Dildar. So with this order. Uh, first four. And then I see more hands. Coming up, Burcha is the fifth one to follow up. Ayşe Kayalı, go ahead. Hi. Uh, my name is Ayşe Kayalı. Nilüfer is one of my closest lifelong friends. Our story began at the age of 12 on a back to school night at the American College for Girls in Istanbul with a chance introduction by our fathers who happened to have gone to the same boarding school. Soon afterwards, we started commuting on to school together on city buses. Those moments waiting at the Beşiktaş bus stop with excitement, watching Nilüfer come down the hill in an ivory colored coat and a bright orange scarf, her large glasses becoming visible as she got closer, are seared in my mind. Our friendship flourished during these shared journeys as we laughed at all the humorous things that happened in our classes. What stands out among our early adventures is our weekly stops at the bookstore, each selecting a book to read during the coming week. We both devoured those books, although neither of us felt any pressure to do so. Senior year, we were co-editors of the Bosphorus Chronicle, our high school newspaper. Nilüfer's gift for collaboration, a skill that seems to be so striking in her professional life, was already evident at that time. Smart, yet never overbearing, Nilüfer was a pleasure to work with and to play with. We were on the volleyball team together with her and Vilma. Then, in a twist of fate that was stranger than fiction, we both enrolled at Yale as freshmen and ended up rooming together for four years. It is this closeness during college that has turned us into sisters rather than friends. Nilüfer embraced every opportunity college life presented with unbridled energy and enthusiasm, perusing every flyer and bulletin boards and uh, on bulletin boards and tree, tr tree trunks, constantly making new friends. She absorbed the world around her, already displaying her knack for networking. One night, shortly after I fell asleep, she called me from a jazz concert on campus. Aisha, she was saying, you must come here and right now. You cannot miss this concert. I regret now that I did not get dressed to go join her. When she took Vincent Scully's art history course, she shared with me so much of the material that I felt as though I had taken the course myself. When we were in graduate school, she came to Boston from Stanford for a meeting, planning to stay with me. It turned out that at the time, I was in the middle of some ill-conceived experiments involving rodents at the Harvard Deaconess Hospital, 
which required me to take measurements every two hours. Nilufar, instead of staying back in my apartment, came to the lab with me. That night, we slept on the couches in the hospital library with my alarm going off every two hours. When I got done in the morning and we made it to breakfast at the hospital cafeteria, we were laughing uncontrollably over the bad coffee. These days though, as I fa face the void that she leaves behind, I shudder every time I encounter something she would appreciate or laugh at, lamenting that I can no longer call or text her. Nilufar cared deeply about the underprivileged, the plight of women all over the world, and about her friends. But what she cared about the most was her son, Ali Jam. Nilufar was an incredibly devoted mother. She was one of the most generous people that I have ever known. And I'm profoundly thankful for the love she brought into all our lives. I will miss her. Thank you. Thank you, Ayşe. Uh, now we continue with Vilma Yüzbaşıyan Gürkan. Wilma, can you hear us? Sorry, I did not unmute myself. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, colleagues, friends, honoring my sister, my soul sister for over 55 years. As heavy as my heart is at her loss, at her, I am reminded once again of the immense intellect the sharp, sharp intellect they, that cut through nonsense, her immense dedication to her work, um, her demand for economic justice, honing on the welfare of women. She has left a legacy that will live on, that lives on in your work. In the work that you do every day and in the friendships that she has built and in the friendships that we will build to honor and continue that legacy. Nidufar and Aisha and uh, Fatma and Yishim, who you heard from today, we all met as we were 11 to 12 year olds, wide eyed at the then the American College for Girls. 43 of us lived our most critical years together. So, for five years at ACG and for three more years as, as, as uh, Robert College, we uh, had intense moments of uh, intellectual engagement, um, highlighted by immense moments of joy, laughter, whether it on, was on the volleyball court or playing table tennis, or as I visited her home in 1968, to watch the first broadcast of the Turkish radio and television, which was mostly consisted of snowflakes, but the occasional appearance of a ballerina and the occasional appearance of the piano player and the joy we felt and the wonder we felt. And, and we wanted to share that with everyone. We had a few very relaxing days in Çınarcık, uh, a little um, town uh, near uh, Yolova in Turkey, where we sat on the beach and dreamt, and dreamt very big, and, we, and our desire to change the world, our desire to improve everyone's lives. So our friendship uh, has uh, continued over the years. Uh, later in our college years, she at Yale with Aisha and Hisham and I at Vassar, and onwards through our life, we found meaning and love in our work, in our friends. And I know that the intensity of her love and dedication for her work was only surpassed by her dedication for her son. Wonderful to have you here, Ali Jam. Thank you all. My Janam Kardeshim Nudifar, you're always with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vilma. Thank you. Um, uh, Hale, I, 
apparently wanted to say something uh, very briefly uh, because she has to leave. She already had a video recorded, but something very briefly. Please go ahead, Ali. Uh, I just wrote in the chat box, I think, Ali Jem, you were number one for your mom always. No matter what, no matter what your her other priorities were, taking you to fish by the Bosphorus, uh, enjoying you fishing with him, that was the joy of her life. Those were her precious moments. She relished in being able to go to the uh, i think it was uh, what was the name of the restaurant bosphorus villa bosphorus villa bosphorus and villa to, Bos yes and to fish there that was <laughs> her most cherished moments ali Jem. you were very much loved and you were number one you are very lucky she always put you first no matter what else she was doing I am a witness to that, and um, so as one of her sisters in Turkey, please feel free to reach out to me whenever you would like to. I would love to be able to talk to you about her. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I absolutely will. I'm very curious, uh, uh, especially after this. I'd love to. I'm a very curious person about history in general. And well, well yeah. So we are learning, uh, you know, I see also in the chat, uh, Ali Cem is learning some other things about her mother and his mother. And some friends are also learning uh, new things about Nilifer that she used to play volleyball, which even I didn't know. And uh, also I know I kind of knew about the others, but this is also new for me also the fishing i knew about fishing so she 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 was you know very colorful person we continue with yasemin uh yasemin let's hear you thank you uh i must say that i am truly jealous of some of you like who had a chance to go to college with nilifar who <laughs> had a chance to take a lesson uh or who got academic advising from her, who became close friends. Because I only got a glimpse of her brilliance uh, during my participation in the GEM summer schools in 2013 and then 2014. But I truly understand what you are talking here because it was enough. And those meetings really were so meaningful to me uh, for a couple of reasons. I, I mean, I do only heterodox conferences. I am from UMass Amherst. I got to know a little bit of feminist economics before I went to these summer schools. I'm a student of Nancy Fulbright, but I wasn't defining myself as a feminist economist before my participation in those summer schools. And what I got to experience there was a beautiful combination of intellectually deep conversations with a joyful attitude passion for justice. It literally gave me hope about a meaningful existence in academia. And then I started to define myself as a feminist economist. And you know, it, Nidifar is a big, big part of this. Like it, it, she was a great role model and she was the uplifting uh, person in, in every occasion. Uh, from the morning to the night, because it didn't end like uh, intellectually very stimulating, stimulating conversations with passion for real change, all day engaging with that, but it didn't end there. It continued with the evening dances. It continued with the sharing a glass of wine and learning from a very wise uh, woman about life, uh, making personal political with her presence, like that kind of deep sharing. It was a great example. Maybe you uh, had a chance to discuss uh, the future of that kind of work the gem uh, word. I really would like to continue that tradition to honor her name, uh, to keep this beautiful community together. And if there is anything I can help with, I would be more than happy to help. We should continue this. Again, thank you again, everyone, for a very nice conference today. 
thank you, Yasemin. Um, you know, you really have put it very nicely, you know, a, a meaningful existence in the academia. And when you encounter her in your during your first year of PhD, it's like, you know, the best gift you could ever get. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, thank you for putting it so nicely. Burcha, please go ahead. Hello, thank you um, so much for for organizing this wonderful meeting. Um, listening to everybody, um, I realize that I'm just one of uh, many people who um, Nidifar had a transformative effect on. Um, I'm, I'm also one of James Tess. Um, I attended, uh, I, I didn't know about feminist economics before, as many of you. Um, so I was informed about this summer school by a professor at my university, Bilai Toksos. I'm grateful to her for letting me know. And um, so I was amazed um, during the summer school when I saw that gender was so interconnected with many things in economics, I was also amazed um, to see that a meeting of economists could be fun, actually. Um, that was new to me, too, um, because it was always um, serious conferences and things. So um, then uh, after that, my academic uh, work um, started to be in gender in economics, and now I'm um, in. Is a, I'm, I'm a visiting professor at Cook Center at um, Cook Center on Social Equality in Duke University, and I'm going to uh, give a course on gender and development with um, guest lectures from IWG um, teachers and students, uh, Leka Chakraborty and um, Emma Minish, and um, also Maria Floro. I'm so proud uh, to be connected to this community, all thanks to Nilifar. Um, and I'm so, so glad to know many of you. I I'll always feel Grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Bucha. Do we have anybody else willing to speak? I don't see any more hands. Uh, we have Insan Tunalı. Please go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> hello, everyone. Uh, many of you do not know me, so let me mention that I met Nulifar back in 1981 uh, when we thought we had infinite time ahead of us. Um, and some of that time we played volleyball together, so uh, <laughs> the fact uh, is verified by uh, my observations. Um, I followed her on and off from the sidelines, uh, so I'm very grateful for the opportunity to catch up. Uh, someone I, I loved so much, uh, but also uh, for the chance to see faces I have not seen in years, uh, so quite an opportunity. Uh, I'm impressed with the account of uh, Nudifer's accomplishments. Uh, not everyone gets to talk the walk and walk the talk the way she did. Uh, I had, uh, I heard uh, insightful and thoughtful uh, presentations laced with uh, love and respect that amplified my admiration. Plenty of fun too, uh, fit for the occasion to celebrate her life. Uh, thanks to the organizers for the effort that went into it uh, and to you all for the promise to keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we certainly uh, have to keep that promise and uh, keep up uh, the agenda of engendering macroeconomics and uh, 
egalitarian theory and policy making. So do we have any other per participant who is willing to share his or her thoughts? I think I'm not seeing any more hands. And um, this has been, uh, so let's call the end of the session uh, as we close. Uh, today, what we did was uh, we remembered Nilufar as a dear friend, uh, as a collaborator, as a mentor, uh, as a feminist activist, and as a mother. In this session, we listened to the personal stories and thoughts of those whose lives were touched by Nilifer in various ways. And we extend our gratitude, gratitude to all participants who sincerely shared their emotions and insights. This timeless and deeply felt loss undoubtedly shook all of us. Today, we once again kept Nifar Chatai's spirit alive among us, a vibrant, passionate, incredibly bright individual who left an indelible mark on the hearts of those she encountered. May her memory be eternal and may her aspirations continue to be carried forward under her name. Thank you all. <laughs>